Welcome to yet another edition of Story Talk is with We Storytellers. It is my pleasure to bring to you Mr. Ramanujam Sridhar, a communication consultant, author, columnist, teacher, trainer, cricket enthusiast and a passionate social activist. He is the founder and CEO of Brandcom, which is part of Madison World. He holds a PG in management from IIM Bangalore and an MA in economics from Loyola College Chennai. After completing over 25 years in the business and holding high profile positions such as CEO and director executive director with Pratibha advertising and uh, RK Swami BBDO and uh, Mudra Communications Sridhar founded Brandcom in 1998 this year they are celebrating their 25th anniversary so congratulations to them he is a former president of the advertising club Bangalore and a former president of IIM Bangalore uh, Alumni Association. I am Bangalore has recently awarded Sridhar as a distinguished alumnus of the institute. He is also the author of three books: One Land, One Billion Minds, a bestseller, and its sequel is called uh, "Googly Branding on Indian Turf." He has the third book in Tamil, which is "Envazi Tanivazi," and is now writing a textbook on advertising and brand management. There is so much to learn from Sridhar. and it is our pleasure to welcome him uh, to the story talkies thank you shridhar for joining us today yeah thank you swati for the opportunity uh, it's a real pleasure to be here thank you so much sir and it is a pleasure to host you today for story talkies so my first question to you sir is that i'm curious that how did you start brandcom what is the story behind it what was the insight what motivated you to start brandcom sure uh, in a sense uh, i would say it would be a happy accident um i worked in different places i was the executive vice president of mudra and then i was um, a uh, ceo of an agency called pratibha and then i was executive director in an agency called rk swami bbdo i had some differences with the um, um you know owners of rk swami so i left them and uh, i had already been uh, ceo in a market like bangalore so it was difficult to go and join at a junior level and i was sort of committed to living in bangalore and i think uh, the happy accident if you could call it that was because i was working for a client called dalmia cements in those agencies and when i told them that i was leaving uh, they were very upset and they said you are handling my business and um, if you leave us in the lurch we will be really badly off so i told them yes but i really can't join any they said we will give the our account to whichever agency you join so i said okay. i can't join anyone else so they said we will fund you why don't you start an agency so i keep telling my colleagues that um, you know the most important thing in the communication business and probably in other businesses as well is that if you have a strong relationship with clients they tend to back you and then uh, you know um, it becomes a lot easier so the starting point for uh, any business as you know is the customer and uh, good customer relationships always help and that was the reason behind uh, my starting brandcom way back in 98 incidentally this is our uh, 25th year congratulations for that so for the silver anniversary Thank so uh, th- this is this is usually generally the you know story in fact Uh, for we story tellers tell also we have a similar story like yeah, uh, sure, we were sure. also encouraged by a client yeah, and they sure. were our first client and then uh, we expanded and yeah, things absolutely. like that so thanks to them yes so that's great so <clears throat> so um obviously as you are saying you are you were an accidental entrepreneur yeah. uh but uh, there has there must be something that kept yeah. you going what were yeah. those pivotal moments so i think one of the things that we were getting a bit disillusioned with the way the advertising business was uh, at that time it was tending to become more of order taking and the clients were telling us do this and do that so we said let's start uh, 
an agency with a difference. So we started advertising with a consultative approach. And uh, more importantly, we said we will have a slightly different business model, uh, which started with a client problem. Uh, clients had a problem with advertising agencies because if you remember those days, advertising was 15% uh, commission and 85% confusion, or at least that's how clients used to describe that. So what happened was your, as an agency, your income was linked to the advertising spend of the client. So clients always suspected and sometimes partly true that we were pushing their clients to spend more than they needed to because our income was linked to that. So the sure. first difference that we offered was that we said we will work with you on a retainer basis. Now, whether you spend one lakh on media or one crore on media makes no difference to us because we are not going to get a part of it. All we are going to get is the uh, retainer income that we will charge based on the sort of resources, depending on whether it's senior people or whether it's junior people, etc. So I think that was a big difference. And subsequently, almost every agency has moved towards uh, this model. And um, I think that was one difference. So I think one of the key things that entrepreneurs probably need to do uh, keep in mind is uh, what is the difference that they are bringing to the table? Because uh, I think more of the same will not work beyond a certain point. So is there something unique and differentiated that you are able to offer? And that really makes a difference. So I think that was one good starting point for us. So uh, the consultative approach was new and uh, obviously the retainership model was new in the yeah. environment. It must have been a very uh, defining yeah. changes at that time. Yeah. Also, I think we were, were almost at that time the first to talk about personal branding. I remember okay. the, the day we started, we were on the front page of Economic Times uh, because we were working with a, a very senior person. Of course, we can't name him, but, uh, you know, um, guiding his um, speeches, his writing, his LinkedIn profile, etc. Even in those days, uh, we still continue to do a lot of that stuff. So I think um, your offerings have to be, uh, I think, not only relevant to the marketplace, but different from what your competition is offering. That is something which I we have learned uh, in our existence. Right. So very interesting. Uh, one interesting note that I picked up was, you know, like you were working on personal branding even then. So this is like a, almost 20, 25 yeah. years right. ago. Yeah. And uh, LinkedIn is, I think, about 12, 13 years old. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, what would you say is, you know, how the things have changed in terms of the platforms being used, the kind of communication that is being used, or the kind of people who want personal branding? Like, as you mentioned, you started with a CEO, but I think more and more people are more interested. I think, um, you know, um, I would like to give my own example. When I was mm -hmm. trying to build a profile for myself as someone who was well-known in advertising, it was very difficult in the sense that, you know, you would go and speak at the Act Club or you would go and speak at the Rotary or you would go and speak at events. And then yeah. I had a regular column in a newspaper. And then that mm -hmm. column I would mail to my prospects uh, for them to see. Uh, so it was quite a comp complicated and convoluted process to build your brand and then suddenly somebody would say did you write something uh, and I would have probably sent him 10 articles by that time so I think uh, today uh, thanks to social media it's yeah. uh, a lot easier to explain your point of view to stand for something um, yeah. to demonstrate your uniqueness through your writing ability and very often you don't even have to have that writing ability because there are professionals who can probably write for you. I think the challenge is, even if you're using professionals, uh, is to not lose your personal touch. And I think uh, perhaps, you know, I'm quite sure you must have your own examples, but as someone who's following social media, I've always admired Anand Mahindra's, uh, you know, posts because he somehow right. manages to keep it simple yeah. and yet, uh, you know, get these sort of 
attention that someone of his stature deserves. So I think um, today social media is evolved, has come a long way. And um, if you have a clear strategy, and it's not merely about visibility, but I think standing for something and ensuring that your point of view is carried forward adequately and effectively, uh, it we have uh, multiple media. So there are people who have made a fortune for themselves through Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn seems to work for... Um, uh, you know, professional uh, development, and there are other mediums. So I think it's uh, today the choices are uh, much more and how you manage them effectively um, to convey a clear, well-articulated message and personality is really going to set you apart. <music> so very interesting, sir. And uh, you have kind of traversed the space from yeah. uh, as you mentioned you know where uh, you would uh, literally mail the articles etc to yeah. people to now it is being widely uh, available say on your instagram or on linkedin mm -hmm. how difficult was the change or how easy was the change from you know uh, the transition and uh, what would be uh, typically it is believed that uh, uh, you know people across you know beyond a certain age including my age uh, have a bit of difficulty with you know getting say acquainted with tiktok and instagram yeah. but being you being of course in the advertising world it might yeah. have been easier but yeah. how easy or difficult was the transition what were the other challenges that you faced over the, these years as the industry moved yeah i think uh, one of the challenges uh, has been uh, the, the rapid pace at which uh, technology has evolved and I wouldn't say that I have kept a complete pace with whatever's happening. But I think uh, one of the things I've learned from, say, one of our clients, IBM, where we used to work with them for quite a few years. In fact, we launched them, uh, I'm not in Bangkok, but in my earlier avatar when they came to India, is that they have a, a process called uh, reverse mentoring. So if, uh, you know, we had young people um, talking to directors and people in their 50s about how to post videos and how right. to write posts, etc. So I think um, being in advertising, I was fortunate in the sense that we have a, have a lot of youngsters around us who are a lot more technologically savvy than we are. So I think uh, the important thing is to have people around you who are better than you. I always talk about this in the sense that, you know, we tend to look for people with uh, similar skills. We always say, don't hire clones. Look for people with uh, skills that can complement your skills so that, you know, if I am a new business development guy, I would like somebody who's good at handling business so that the moment we get it, we are able to continue it. So I think uh, the important thing is to, Surround yourself with young people and keep challenging yourself because one of the biggest challenges that I think people who are older face um, is the difficulty or the refusal to move out of their comfort zone. Now, if you are able to move out of your comfort zone, then things are um, a lot easier. I'll just give you an example, several examples from our business. Mm -hmm. So when we first started, we started as an advertising agency. And then advertising became me too. Everybody was doing the same thing. Everybody was doing retainers. So I was suddenly competing with the largest agencies for the smallest business. So I felt it was not making any sense. So we uh, qualified ourselves. Um, I started to teach brand management at various uh, institutes like IIMS. And we did a very successful brand management practice. And then we found that brand management uh, was becoming a commodity. A lot of people would just do designs on their IMAX and things um, became very um, you know, difficult to sustain. So we moved to public relations and to social media. So I think one of the key things to be an entrepreneur is to have the capability to morph your company or your business model depending on the needs of the art. So I think that is one thing uh, that we have been able to do with a reasonable amount of success. And when we felt uh, that we were, um, let's say, not going anywhere as an organization and finding it difficult to retain talent, then we had a partnership, which, uh, which is now total with uh, Madison, 
which is a much larger agency, which ensured that, you know, we had um, resources and we had the capability to deal with uh, increasing demands of clients. So I think uh, the important thing is to be flexible, uh, to change with the times and try and keep uh, testing yourself and moving out of your comfort zone uh, frequently. Sounds like, you know, keep yourself two steps ahead of what is <laughs> the other person going to think about you, what competition is thinking of. And again, change, uh, it's all about change and managing change within yourself rather than being, you know, uh, about it being about age or any kind of Absolutely. technology. Right. Very interesting. So, but uh, again, we find ourselves in a similar situation. There's a whole revolution of change yeah. happening in terms yeah. of AI uh, kind yeah. of infiltrating every aspect of our life. So yeah. what do you anticipate with all these changes that are coming up with, you know, uh, even writers and designers, etc. everybody taking, you know, help of AI yeah so for example when i do a slightly long post uh, in linkedin i get a uh, a comment would you like ai to <laughs> rewrite this piece <laughs> yes. so i'm quite sure you you're more familiar with this than i am but i think uh, yeah. the key thing is um, see technology has always been there and if you look at my business uh, the advertising business, uh, when uh, television came or radio came, uh, they said print will die. And then when uh, television came, they said radio will die. And uh, now when the internet is here, they say everything will die. But so I think everything continues to coexist, maybe with less uh, degree of importance. Print is perhaps got a much more limited role than it used to have in the 80s when I first came to advertising. So I think... Um, I am a strong believer in human intelligence. I think human intelligence is required uh, to cope with change. I think human intelligence is required to harness technology. And I think we are in a very, very interesting stage of our professional lives when all this is happening. Um, I think the challenge will be uh, to not get submerged by it, uh, but find ways of how uh, you know, we can actually, because I think one of the biggest challenges that we are going to face now will be in pricing, uh, because we are going to be asked to be more um, productive. The challenge will be, uh, you know, clients will ask you to deliver more. They're already asking us to do this. So, uh, you know, I think um, the challenge is to aggressively find new avenues, new ways of growth, uh, and using the technology and not uh, get bogged down by it. I, it's really a, um, an interesting thing. We're working with it. We are um, uh, uh, equipping ourselves. And um, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are in for an interesting time ahead. Great. Uh, good to hear some positive notes on that. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, so, so uh, during these 25 years, you must have achieved a lot of milestones in terms of yeah. the business, as well as challenges that you kind of enumerated already what were the biggest milestones according to you and uh, what were those moments where you made the biggest jumps or the spring in you know the business what were those so, defining moments i think uh, <laughs> yeah jumps i think the biggest uh, challenge is the learnings i would say uh, rather than the jumps in the sense that to give you an example even when we were doing this pr business uh, we did a lot of work with technology and then suddenly technology went through a downturn. We were involved with a lot of retail work in the sense that, um, you know, um, probably if you recall Mr. Kishore Biani, a lot of every bit of his work was done by us. In a sense, we were responsible for him being branded the retail king of India and all that. And then a lot of our business was linked to it and suddenly he went through a difficult time. So we went to, into a problem. Uh, we did a lot of work with um, um, software, as I told you, they went into a problem. So I think one of the things that we learned was to de-risk. So today, mm -hmm. I'm not dependent on any particular sector or whatever. So even we, are, we do a lot of work with education, which we believe is largely recession-proof. So I think uh, the important thing in business is to keep evolving with the times and not 
be too stuck with anything that has, uh, I think you have to question everything that works uh, for you. And uh, if you're able to dispassionately, dispassionately and objectively look back at your own success or achievements, uh, then it becomes a, a big thing. And the other thing is to be realistic. Like, for example, there have been times when we, uh, we had difficulty paying our salaries. Uh, my The house that I lived in, uh, I have mortgaged three times. Um, so these are times, uh, you know, business teaches you the difference between stress and pressure. Stress is very simple. You know, you're not meeting a deadline or something is not up to the mark. Uh, that you do a day in and day out. Pressure is uh, completely different. You're unable to pay salaries on the, the... So I think these were the things that uh, I guess I lost a lot of hair in the bargain. But we learned a lot uh, in this process. And uh, I think to me, the biggest jump, if you could call it, was our partnership with Madison. Because suddenly okay. uh, it opened uh, so many doors uh, to us that were not, uh, you know previously available to us. So I think, um, I guess we were fortunate and more importantly, I have, at that time I had 60 employees and I think it was important because neither of my children really wanted to continue the business. So it's important that people who have been loyal to you, who have stuck by you, who have given their best years of their working life to you, you have to secure their future. And I think that was really an important thing for us. This is very, very interesting because uh, what I learned from this answer of yours is that learning, you know, at every stage we have different uh, defining moments. We learn different things and it's it's almost like, you know, we graduate from one class to the other class and Absolutely. we learn a little more yeah. and become a little more mature. So true. So this is uh, yeah very, very interesting. So, uh, so my last uh, question is, I think we will be able to cover the time. Yeah. Is that how do you see the entire... Uh, arena of communication evolving in the yeah. as compared so think, to what we have seen and how it yeah. is going so far so i think the key thing is is actually integration it has been going on for a long time when advertising we started talking about integration nearly 20 30 years ago i think this is uh, very critical and uh, and you will probably realize it in the business that you are in that Actually, content is king, and we have been saying this for a long time. But unfortunately, this has been one of the biggest weaknesses when you look at uh, communication as a strategy. And uh, I think uh, the role of people like us, and you know, there are so many industry leaders who are far more um, distinguished than I am, is to get senior management involved in communication. Unfortunately, you know, in India, we do not have this, uh, I guess it's a global phenomenon as well, because I've been reading about it, is that how do I get the CEO to realize that communication is an important and integral part of his life? So I think our role as communicators cannot stop with merely creating content or with visibility or uh, engagement, but to say that, you know, you have to be the champion of the brand. You have to communicate and you have to share that enthusiasm and make it infectious across the company. And I think that is where we as an industry are probably not done what we should do. And that's really, I think, the future for us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is definitely a big roadblock. I'm, my background is in HR and, you know, I totally, totally am nodding my head and empathizing with the whole thing because getting the senior folks to communicate yeah. is a very, yeah. very, very big yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so thank you so much. It has been very, very lovely. I, I started at a very short notice, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and I thank you for the opportunity for, you know, this direct uh, nuggets of wisdom that you shared thank with you. me. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. I uh, hope we have more occasions to interact. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir.